Hi folks, this is Dr. Reeves, neurologist and internet sensation. Videos watched by dozens of people, and someday I hope it's actually dozens, but we're not really there yet necessarily for most videos. Today's video is about orthostatic hypotension. Did you like the cool Scrabble graphic at the beginning? That took a little time. Orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic hypotension is a really fancy word we have in medicine for a really simple concept. And that is, a person's lying down, and when they stand up, their blood pressure drops too much, and they can have problems. How much is too much? Now, we're going to go to my fancy graph. Okay, fancy graphic time. Orthostatic hypotension. Really, it's written as one word, but I decided to separate it out just because it's kind of cool. Now, here's a graph, if you will. I'm going to draw three lines on here, and these are going to be positions. So this is lying down. This is standing. I'll put a little I there for standing immediately. Standing at one minute. Standing at three minutes. And sometimes we'll do things standing at five minutes. So this is uh, the blood pressure and there's the top number of your blood pressure like 120 over 80 that's systolic blood sorry it's just like off i have to back it up a little bit okay the camera girl had a little problem there so please forgive her we'll treat her accordingly later so when you have your blood pressure there's two numbers the top number the systolic blood blood pressure and the bottom number or the diastolic blood pressure, which we always say, you know, something, something over something, something. Now, there's another number that's really important, and that's the heart rate. Now, at this point, fancy graphic man gets colorful. So when you're lying down, let's say your blood pressure is here, and you stand up, it falls a bit. And then as you stay standing, it sort of recovers. Now it may not get completely back to as high as it was before, but there's a sort of a, a dip that you see. The bottom number, the diastolic blood pressure, often has a typical dip, although it's less. And I didn't draw that extremely well, but you get the idea. So we've done this with thousands of people, and we have normal values for how much the top number can drop and how much the bottom number can drop and before it's abnormal and we call it orthostatic hypotension. Now a little a little tidbit here. We have normal cutoffs for the top number and the bottom number but lesser degrees of blood pressure drop with characteristic symptoms and problems can be just as meaningful. So these are good numbers, but I want to emphasize they are not hard and fast uh, numbers. It's not like the speed limit on the highway. Now the bottom number, the heart rate, uh, we're going to choose another fancy color uh, here. Maybe chartreuse, if that's what that is. I don't know what this is. It looks like sky that's, blue. No, it looks like sky blue. That's more of a kind of a... Robin's egg blue. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, camera girl. Uh, now, your heart rate's cruising along here, lying down. You stand up, and the first thing that happens is your heart rate goes up. And then it tends to settle back down. Again, not typically getting to exactly where it was before. And again, we have normal values for how much this should be. This is what I call the 20-10-20 rule. The top number should not drop more than 20. This is millimeters of mercury, because we're talking blood pressure. So the, the uh, bottom number should not drop more than 10 millimeters of mercury, and the heart rate should not go up more than 20 beats per minute. If it exceeds this, if either of these is over the threshold, then you can call it orthostatic hypotension. But I want to emphasize again, if you have somebody who's who's uh, lying down and they have a blood pressure of uh, something over something and they stand up and the bottom number drops nine and they're feeling awfully woozy and, and, and their vision gets a little speckly or dark and the top number drops 18 
you know, they're feeling pretty, pretty uh, poorly. You don't look at them and say, well, you don't have a problem. You don't have orthostatic hypotension. Okay, that's not true at all. You can't figure out, remember, this, is, this part's the hypotension part. But you can't make sense of this without knowing what's going on with the heart rate. Because the, the heart, okay, apologies to my cardiology colleagues, this is just a dumb pump. The heart is just a hydraulic pump. It's got some wiring and some valves. And its job is to pressurize the system. And if it, so when the blood pressure drops, because you, know, you stand up, blood runs down to your feet when you go from uh, lying to, to standing, and then, then the systems start to recover, the first thing that happens is the heart responds. Then out here, the blood vessels are responding to keep your blood pressure up. Okay. And if, if you have somebody who's dropping their blood pressure and the heart rate doesn't change, then you know that's part of the problem because it's supposed to change. So this is a, the thumbnail definition of orthostatic hypotension. We haven't said anything really particularly about the symptoms or the causes and certainly not about the treatments. So why don't we go to that phase next? Orthostatic lightheadedness or orthostatic hypotension symptoms. Well, kind of lightheadedness is obviously a big one there. The problem with orthostatic hypotension and people who tend to go faint on us is that most but not all have lightheadedness before they faint. 88 to 95 percent. So 95 percent, that means 1 in 20 times they won't. Often people have not just this kind of lightheaded feeling but they may have a change in vision, tunnel vision. Sometimes as the edges get gray or come in, sometimes they get speckles or sparkly dots. They can be dark, they can be light, uh, they can be uh, multicolored occasionally. Um, they, sometimes people have a kind of a whooshing in the ear or here in their hearing, or people say things sound muffled or they sounded kind of distant. Um, often people may feel nauseated they may sweat, they may be, feel hot or cold or clammy or shaky. Um, it's helpful when you're evaluating somebody who's fainted, it's helpful to know if the symptoms kind of built up quickly or they built up slowly. When people faint, and I'm evaluating them for that, I always want to know, did you have any symptoms that came before the faint? And if you did, how long did it take to build up? There's a difference in the person who faints because uh, they're, they have orthostatic hypotension and their blood pressure is kind of sagging and they've been standing in the hot sun and it's sagging more and it's, and it's sagging and they're feeling worse and worse and worse. And you can get the sense that this is building up, you know, that they, and they're feeling nauseated and they're hot and then finally they pass out after five minutes or ten minutes or something like that. That certainly suggests one mechanism of fainting person developed orthostatic hypotension. And people who faint uh, very abruptly, always, no warning, particularly if they faint sitting down. I had someone call me uh, earlier this week with this symptom. She's fainted a number of times, maybe once a month, can faint sitting down. Basically, almost no warning, maybe a couple of seconds, something like that. That sounds not like orthostatic hypotension and more likely to be a heart problem where the heart is slowing down. So other symptoms of orthostatic hypotension include a certain kind of headache. This doesn't happen all that frequently, but it does happen. And it's what some people call a coat hanger headache. And that's because it, the headache happens sort of in the distribution as if you had a coat hanger inside your coat, which would be a little bit weird to wear around. And people would probably laugh at you behind your back, but you know what I mean. And it's sort of in this, this triangular shape there. And it's a headache that's present when you're up because your blood pressure is sagging and people are having you know, uh, problems in that and they can get a headache from that. Um, so that's a, a Cook's tour of some of the basic symptoms of orthostatic hypotension, what its definition is. Remember, the 20-10-20 rule. If your top bl uh, blood pressure number is dropping more than 20, your bottom is dropping more than 10, then that's orthostatic hypotension. In order to figure out why, kind of what's going on, you have to know what the heart rate is. Um, I, want to do, I do want to make one other comment about uh, orthostatic hypotension and how you find it. Yeah. Now, cool graphic. Almost certainly, 
your doctor or nurse who measures your blood pressures in different positions. We call them doing orthostatics, orthostatic blood pressures. Almost certainly, he or she was trained incorrectly in how to find orthostatic hypotension. I was trained incorrectly, so I'm not getting up on my high horse here. Most commonly, people are taught you do it lying, blood pressure and pulse, then sitting, blood pressure and pulse, and then standing, blood pressure and pulse. And when I give lectures about this kind of thing, kind of like this video, I always make the point that, you know, when people have orthostatic blood pressure problems, they get orthostatic hypotension, and they start to get symptoms, what do we tell them to do? Well, we say, why don't you sit down? Why? Because it raises your blood pressure. So if they're checking your blood pressure lying, sitting, standing, they kind of have declared, I don't want to know if you have orthostatic hypotension unless it's really bad. I don't want to know about it that, until, until it's that bad. If it's mild or moderate, I'm not interested because what we're doing is we're checking the blood pressure down and then we're giving them time to adjust and we're checking the blood pressure and we're easing them up, which of course is how all of us live our lives. We never get out of bed except that we sit at the side of the bed for two or three minutes, kind of get adjusted, and then we get up and stand there for a little bit, and then we go off. Of course, we all live our lives that way, mostly not. If you have orthostatic hypotension, you actually kind of do live your life that way sometimes. So that is the end of orthostatic hypotension in terms of a brief uh, overview. I haven't talked about causes, and I haven't talked about associated symptoms. So I'm going to shoot, I promise, Scout's Honor, that I'm going to shoot another video on autonomic disorders, uh, which will be kind of a Cook's tour of autonomic disorders, of which orthostatic hypotension is one, but there are many other kinds of symptoms. And that's going to be a very kind of symptom-based video, if you will, and, and not so scientific. But anyway, I hope this is a, a useful video for you. If it was not, please comment uh, in the YouTube comment section of some other guy's YouTube channel. And if it was pretty helpful, then why don't you comment below on this video. Thanks. Have a good day. Smile. <laughs> what?